Sabbath and good morning everyone. Happy Sabbath to you all. And a special welcome to Mr. and Mrs. Myers. We welcome you and we look forward to fellowshipping with you and getting to know both of you better. Brethren, tomorrow we will be celebrating the Feast of Pentecost, which is also called the Feast of First Fruits. Brethren, we will also be celebrating the anniversary of the founding of the New Testament Church back in AD 31, when the Holy Spirit was poured out on the 120 disciples who were gathered together in one place to celebrate <coughs> this feast. Now, the word church is translated from the Greek word Ecclesia, which means called out assembly or congregation. Now the church consists of those who have been called out of this world by God to be part of his first fruits, as Mr. Sideno mentioned in the opening prayer. And brethren, we are those called out ones. God has individually called us out of the world and placed us in his church. And to those of us who have accepted that call to become members of his church, God has issued a certain instruction that I want to focus on this morning. So let's turn to 2 Peter chapter 1. 2 Peter chapter 1, and let's look at verse 10. Verse 10 says, Therefore, brethren, be even more diligent to make your call and election sure. For if you do these things, you will never stumble. Brethren, this morning, I want to focus on what this verse says telling us. And this verse is directed to all of us sitting here today, to all the members of his church. And God is telling us to make our calling and, and election show, <coughs> to be diligent about it. Otherwise, we can stumble and fall. And if we stumble and fall, we run the risk of not being in the kingdom of God. So, Reverend, this morning I want to look at three things we can do to make our calling and election sure. The first one I want to mention is that we need to appreciate our calling. Do we appreciate what a tremendous blessing it is to be called now? to be part of his first fruits. We have been called to be part of the bride that will be married to Jesus Christ when he returns to the earth. And let's look at Revelation 19. Revelation 19, which <coughs> speaks about that. And let's look at verse 7. Let us be glad and rejoice and give him glory, for the marriage of the Lamb has come, and his wife has made herself ready. And to her it was granted to be arrayed in fine linen, clean and bright, for the fine linen is the righteous acts of the saints. Then he said to me, Write, Blessed are those who are called to the marriage supper of the Lamb, and he said to me, these are the true sayings of God. Brethren, out of all the billions of people who have been born, only a relatively small number have been given this special invitation to be at the marriage supper of the Lamb. That wedding will be the most marvelous event that has ever occurred in the history of the world. And those in the second resurrection will not have this wonderful blessing. 
And this is why the first resurrection is mentioned as the better resurrection. Now, generally, a bride and a groom, when they are preparing for their wedding, they tend to devote a lot of time, money, and energy when it comes to planning their wedding. They want that day to be extra special. A day that they will remember for the rest of their lives. And many couples even go to the extent of hiring wedding planners who are experts in weddings to ensure that all goes well on that day. But brethren, these human wedding planners are no match for God the Father and Jesus Christ who have been planning the wedding of the church to Christ since the foundation of the world. And let's go to Ephesians chapter 1. Ephesians chapter 1, and let's look at verse 3. Verse 3. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places in Christ, just as he chose us in him before the foundation of the world, that we should be holy and without blame before him in love, having predestined us to sonship as sons by Jesus Christ to himself, according to the good pleasure of his will. Brethren, these verses show that great thought and attention would have gone into the selection of those who would comprise the bride of Christ. You and I have been selected by God the Father to be on that wedding list. Do we appreciate the blessing the honor, the privilege that we have been given? Or do we devalue it? Do we devalue its importance like Esau? And let's look at Hebrews chapter 12. Hebrews chapter 12, which makes a mention of Esau. And it says, Hebrews chapter 12, verse 16. Lest there be any fornicator or profane person like Esau, who for one morsel of food sold his birthright. Brethren, Esau did not appreciate his birthright and he lost it. And similarly, brethren, if we don't appreciate our calling, we can lose it just like he did. We, as the first fruits, must place a high value on our calling if we want to make it sure. It must be number one in our lives. Nothing else must come before it. Now let's look at the second point, And that is, recognize the importance of being filled with the Holy Spirit. Brethren, Jesus Christ came and died so that we can have access to the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit is the greatest force and power in the universe. God created the heavens and the earth through the power of the Holy Spirit. And let's look at Luke chapter 11. Luke chapter 11 and verse 13. Verse 13 says, If you then, being evil, know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will your heavenly Father give the Holy Spirit to those who ask Him? Brethren, God is ready and willing to give us more of this power this Holy Spirit. 
all we have to do is ask. And we must not be content with just a small amount, with the amount we received at our baptism. We must go on from that and seek to be filled with the Holy Spirit. Brethren, God dwells in us through His Holy Spirit. And once God is in us, we are guaranteed eternal life. And let's look at John chapter 10. John chapter 10, verse 28. Verse 28. And I give them eternal life, and they shall never perish. Neither shall anyone snatch them out of my hand. My Father, who has given them to me, is greater than all. And no one is able to snatch them out of my Father's hand. Brethren, God is greater than all. And no one is able to snatch us out of his hand. Not even Satan the devil. So brethren, if we are filled with the Holy Spirit, our election and calling is assured. And the Feast of Pentecost helps us to recognize the importance of the Holy Spirit dwelling in us. It is a vital ingredient in securing our calling and election. The third point I want to look at is that we need to resolve to endure to the very end, no matter what happens. Brethren, in this life, we will face many trials and difficulties in our journey to the kingdom of God. There will be times when we will want to give up and turn back, but we must not give in. We must make up our minds that we will finish the race that we are in. Let's look at Matthew chapter 24. Matthew chapter 24 and verse 13. But he who endures to the end shall be saved. Brethren, only those who endure to the end will be saved. Many over the years have started the Christian journey, but have not completed it. And there are many reasons why they don't finish. But one reason is given in verse 12, just before verse 13. So let's look at verse 12. And because lawlessness will abound, the love of many will grow cool. Brethren, many don't endure to the end because they allow their love to grow cold. They allow their love for God and the brethren to wane and die. So the question for us is, is our love growing cold or is it increasing? Brethren, we must ensure that we do not allow our love to grow cold. So in conclusion, brethren, we need to ask ourselves the question, do we appreciate the tremendous calling we have been given? Do we understand the incredible opportunity that we have right now to be among the first fruits of God's plan of salvation? So brethren, as we draw closer to the end of this age, we must be determined to fulfill our calling. Let us ensure that we do not allow anything to sidetrack us from this tremendous calling that God has given to each one of us. Let us make our calling and election sure so we don't miss out on this wonderful opportunity to be part of the kingdom of God.